Okay, so I guess this is the uh, oddball group of, of the morning. And, and really, it's okay to be called an oddball. I think I've been kind of an oddball all my life. When I was an undergraduate, all of my friends went to medical school and are now practicing physicians. And then in graduate school, they all went you know, and pursued careers in academia. And I took this weird you know, detour and just took a really different turn. So um, I keep getting promoted by by Tim here, who keeps promoting me. I'm, I'm the senior director of science at my museum. I'm not the president and CEO of, of the institution I work for, but I love my job, and it, it keeps me, it keeps my, my, my bearings, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, with feet on the ground, keeps me still in touch with science, which, which I really, really do enjoy. So this is the place I work for. This is the St. Louis Science Center in St. Louis, Missouri. It's a big place. It's very photogenic, especially you know, in the right light for photography. Um, it's, it's huge. It, it has 60,000 square feet of exhibition space. So um, in, in terms of um, um, permanent exhibitions and traveling exhibitions, we host a lot of exhibitions that we try to change on a very regular basis. So that's the main building on the upper left. And this is our James S. McDonald Planetarium, which is situated in Forest Park, which is the largest city park in the country. So even larger than Central Park in New York. Um, the bridge goes across Interstate 40, 4064, and that connects the two buildings. Um, so I've been at the Science Center for close to 20 years now. And um, in, in the past to where I am, you know, as, as other speakers have, have spoken of earlier, was not a straight path. And in many ways, you know, some doors that closed um, to me opened others. So it's been, you know, serendipitous kind of um, experience for me. So let's start with my backstory because everybody likes backstory. So there's, there's me um, as a grad student, but I, I came from the Philippines, born and raised there, pursued my undergraduate degree in zoology, liked animals more than plants. So sorry to the plant lovers in the audience. I like plants now. Um, <laughs> so, um, I, um, so after my, my bachelor's, I um, pursued my uh, PhD degree at the University of Michigan, where I was studying the uh, neurobiology of um, sexual maturation. So looking at GNRH and pituri pituitary hormone regulation of the timing of puberty. So, I worked at the sheep research farm at the University of Michigan, and this is me during one of my overnight um, blood collection um, you know, um, stints. It was very cold. It was a huge adjustment for me. Remember, I'm from the tropics, from the Philippines. So having to uh, drive to this remote place where we had the research farm in the snow with a rear wheel drive Volvo was not fun. <laughs> And then after doing my PhD there, which I really loved, and I thought, yes, that is the path I'm going to go for. I really love reproductive biology. I took a postdoc position at The Ohio State University, where I worked in an IVF, in vitro fertilization laboratory. And there I quickly learned to not wear my Michigan sweatshirt on campus. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, as, as uh, you know, fate, you know, turns out, I, I did not you know, stay in academia, and that's because I married another PhD. So you know how in these dual PhD families, the deal for us was that whoever got the real job first, the other one would follow, because we did not <laughs> like the idea of the you know, commuting back and forth on weekends. So my husband was offered a faculty position at St. Louis University, he's a geologist, and so I said, okay, well, there should be something in St. Louis for me. I'm going to go with you and just poke around and see you know, what's there. And um, that's what I did. And I thought, okay, I'm going to approach the major hospitals and see if there's something that opens up at an IVF lab. And all of them said, no, you got to come with your own money or your own startup grant or whatnot. So that was the door that closed for me. Then so I thought, well, there's a world-renowned zoo the St. Louis Zoo, which is you know, one of the best in the nation, if not the world. Um, and I said, well, there's an endangered species program at the zoo, a conservation program, and certainly, you know, for sure, they would need somebody with my skills. So I went over there at the zoo, and yet another door over there closed for me because they weren't hiring. 
So then I said, well, you know, what are my other skills? I like to talk to people. I like to, you know, turn young kids, you know, on to science. I really like to see, you know, when I, when I talk to my nieces and nephews and, you know, other kids who happen to, you know, kind of be in my circuit at that time, like talking to them about science. And I, and I kind of discovered, yeah, you know, there are ways that you could make science come alive and be interesting for, for everyone, not just, you know, for the scientific community. So I went to the education department of the zoo. And for a while, for about maybe um, four and a half months, I worked in the education department. At the time, they were renovating a gallery that was all focused on evolution. So I remember they had an animatronic Darwin thing that talked that was kind of scary. But I <laughs> tried to, you know, kind of revitalize the content and make it interesting. And then I met somebody um, who came because he was collaborating with somebody at the zoo and said, hey, you know, I work at the St. Louis Science Center and we're developing a, a new gallery. This might be interesting to you. It's at the time the very first um, gallery of uh, its kind in the world. It was the DNA Zone, which focused on genetics and biotechnology. So I said, yeah, well, that kind of sounds interesting. So then I put in my resume, applied for it, and, you know, and I've been at the Science Center ever since. So, but I started, you know, so it's a series of just serendipitous moments, and somebody had mentioned earlier how networking is really, really very important. So being able to talk to people, you know, figuring out what they, what they do, and then in the process, I guess, it's a discovery that you would make for yourself as well. What are you really interested in, and, you know, what sorts of things really kind of, you know, increase your heart rate, not because of anxiety, but because you're excited about something. <laughs> So kind of, you know, pursue those, those things. So um, at the St. Louis Science Center, I did not start at my current position. I started um, developing the educational programs for that DNA Zone Gallery, and then moved up to become Director of Life Sciences, so I built up the Life Science Program, and so now I'm kind of at this crossroads where I'm kind of overseeing all of science at the Science Center, which is a little daunting, but it's okay because I'm not expected to be the expert in all fields of science that we cover. Um, the work that I do requires me to go out to the scientific community and talk to scientists in, in the community. So there's Washington University and St. Louis University. There are research institutions like Monsanto is headquartered there. The Donald Danforth Plant Science Center is there. So there's not a lack of, of um, experts in the field who I can talk to and reach out to and just say, you know, I don't know anything about string theory, but I know somebody who does. So these are, these are the things, just a snapshot of the things I do at the Science Center. I develop exhibits, educational programs, you have to like writing because I write a lot of grant proposals in my position. So I do, you know, write um, NSF, NIH, DOE, NASA um, grant proposals. So that's something that we are constantly pursuing as a not-for-profit institution. We're always looking for money. I mean, that's the nature of the institution um, that I work for. At the very basic level, I ensure that our science um, content is accurate in everything that we present, but the main, the key thing that, that um, is, I guess, the hallmark of my work is, is the collaboration with the scientific community, and that's the part I enjoy the most, because kind of through them, I am, I am living the lives that you guys are living right now. I'm not the bench scientist, but I can, you know, talk to them, and then my role is to really try to figure out um, what is it of anything that you guys are doing that would really resonate with the public? What would make your science matter to everyone on a personal level, and why, why would it be important to their lives? Um, so I serve on advisory committees. I'm, I'm usually the person that they go to, especially when grant writing comes around and they're looking for somebody to partner with so they have something to write under, under the broader impacts section of the proposal. Um, so that's, that's kind of like, a, in a nutshell, um, what I do at the Science Center. I budget, um, I have to deal with budgets as well, and the kind of not fun aspect of my work is that I have to manage people. So last year I had to fire somebody, so that's, you know, you know those things happen, but it's kind of like a, another skill that needs to be developed because you are always dealing with people. And, you know, kind of traditionally at the Science Center, these are the STEM, I hope everybody is familiar with that term, STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. These are the content areas that we've traditionally um, worked with at the St. Louis Science Center. 
but we are moving towards a way to really kind of um, integrate and, and really have a more multidisciplinary or um, integrated approach to, to um, science. Is my time really running out? Oh my God, oh my gosh. Okay, so really quickly, I'm just gonna breeze through these. Um, these are the projects I worked on. The Life Science Lab is um, a new, um, new wish gallery that we've developed. We have a lot of hands-on activities where we actually have um, bench um, actual wet lab activities this is a collaboration with the University of Missouri in Columbia. Um, we did a, a project called organ printing, which is like 3D printing, only using um, real cells instead of you know, plastic and resin in order to um, kind of bypass the idea of um, transplantation from other sources. Um, St. Louis University um, collaboration, we built an ozone garden, which is an, an, uh, an indicator garden for ozone damage in plants. Um, Family Med School is a program that we've done in collaboration with both Washington University and St. Louis University, Anatomy and Physiology hands-on lab. We talk about real human organs. Um, the students actually get to handle real organs. They work with their parents, so it makes it a really nice family um, program. Um, another one is on neuroscience, the Amazing Brain Carnival it's called. This is a citizen science project that we've done with the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center. It's a kind of from, um, similar to the Monarch Watch activity. We've had our, um, our visitors really collect um, algae samples um, from wherever they may be, uh, from their backyards, and they brought the samples back to us and we had um, the scientists at the Danforth Plant Science Center analyze them for lipid and um, in order to identify which, which ecotypes of algae would prove to be um, viable candidates for biofuel production. Algae Palooza is a celebration of all things algae that um, kicked off backyard biofuels. And then SciFest is um, our program, it's our year long program where we have um, themed um, presenters and uh, we, have, we have activities that are themed around certain things. Um, we just finished Brain Matters, which is all about the brain and mind. And we, this is where we really partner with the scientific community to have them bring their research to the public. So it's a nice, very face-to-face -face interaction between the scientists and the public. This is my most recent project, um, GROW, which is an agriculture-themed um, one-acre indoor-outdoor exhibition and we've partnered again with the scientific community with that, that's a robot in the lower right hand corner. Um, it's a robot that takes um, air, temperature, air temperature, soil moisture. Um, we fly drones um, to um, do some remote sensing um, studies of the plants, the crops that are grown um, and grow in, in relation to um, their, um, re uh, their reactions to drought. And then these are some of our current efforts. So I wanted to just um, emphasize that um, we are trying to build now a scientist in residence program where we're wanting to really bring a scientist, perhaps a person who is in between phases, in between trying to decide whether to pursue um, a postdoctoral um, you know, training to come and just stay with the Science Center for six months to uh, really engage with the Science Center and with, with the public um, and to really help us strengthen our programs and projects at the Science Center. We're also developing an informal science education and communication program for the scientific community because now more, more than ever, it really is so important for scientists to be out there in the public talking about why science is so important and why science is really a part of our daily lives. So I'm gonna end here because I've gone way over time. So I would be very glad to continue the conversation um, during the rest of the day. Thanks so much.